Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry show, except the wonderful, delightful Katie Hopkins is in America, in Colorado. Welcome to America, Katie Hopkins. <laughs> Thank you so much. And that's exactly what the border official said when he let me in. He said, welcome home. And I ended up in tears by the baggage carousel because I'm always overwhelmed when I get back to the land of the free. Well, in the land of the free, I understand you're in Colorado today and you have some news having visited a vigil for the people that were slaughtered by this Syrian maniac the other week. Um, I went to the vigil for the shooting at uh, the King Super. That's the name of the supermarket where the shooting happened. And I can tell you, Barry, there was an atmosphere there that was just incredibly odd. I've been to a lot of vigils. It wasn't like that at all. As you walked in, I mean, the thousands of people were turning up, all talking about their vaccination. A guy was offering double masks. So if you had one mask on, you had to have another. And then there was a desk where they were handing out uh, literature. I'm just going to hold it up to the camera. Gun reform now, telling me that uh, in a couple of days' time, it was March 28th, where to meet for the next gun rally disarm hate, you know, more of the gun stuff and all of these. So basically making a vigil, absolutely a protest about guns. And then down outside, I walked down to the King Super where there's a fence and the flowers have been put. But the flowers have been overtaken by anti-NRA and quite disgustingly worded posters. So the atmosphere there, Barry, is, is very hostile and I would say not respectful at all. Well, let's talk specifically about what you just mentioned. I'm disgusted by that news, especially in light of what I'm going to tell you. The shooter who slaughtered these people, Ahmed al-Issa, is a Syrian refugee who came to the United States but he didn't leave his jihadi background behind him. And that's what really bothers me. In the beginning, after the shooting, everybody, including relatives of those in the White House, were saying that this was just another white supremacist slaughtering people. And then it became an anti-gun thing. And what everybody ignored Katie Hopkins is the fact that this guy Ahmed had social media posts all about his jihadi background leanings and prejudices and support for all things radical Islam. Why does anybody refuse to talk about that? And why is it now gun control when you mentioned the NRA? <laughs> In American history, there has never been ever a mass shooting ever by an NRA member. It's kind of unfathomable. You know, when this lady was, because I was pretending to be, you know, one of them, obviously, I do respect the fact that people lost their lives. I would be at the vigil wanting the very best for everybody. But when this lady was pushing this into my hands, which is a, dis a sticker for disarm hate, you know, every bit of me wanted to say, well, how about we disarm jihadis? How about we disarm Islamists? How about we don't have people who have a track record of hating white America have weapons because they're jihadis and they're out to kill us? You know, this stuff, is exactly that these people are kind of poison because they're encouraging the people that hate us. Katie, spot on with your analysis. Why aren't we talking about the fact that this guy targeted that supermarket, among other reasons, because it had massive amounts of Jewish clientele and the store was packed with Passover food and specialties for the Passover holiday, and there were posts about it. And all that's been whitewashed away, and now it's about gun control. Guys like this will take any ability they can to kill those that oppose their radical ideology. In Israel, Absolutely. if they can't get a gun, they bring a knife 
or a bomb or a boulder or something. And the same thing here. It's not guns. Yeah. It's it's a radical ideology that we should be putting up bumper stickers about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And in the same in the UK, it's not about then guns because we can't have them. So they use knives, they use acid, they use whatever they can get their hands on. These are just people that hate us. And I meant to tell you, Barry, as well, that right now in the UK, the Muslim massive have taken over a British school. They are blockading the gates and they won't allow children in because a religious studies teacher used a cartoon drawing of the Prophet Muhammad in order to educate the kids. And he has been threatened with death and he's currently in hiding and under police protection with his family. And you'll know and your, your viewers, our lovely ATP family will know that a French teacher was just beheaded for the very same crime. And of course, right here in the, well, back in the UK, again, the Muslim mob is being seen as in the right. The school is apologizing and that teacher will never have a life again. We always pander to the Muslim mob, and I don't know why. Well, speaking about family, I don't know if you know anything about this, but this is really bizarre. Um, three members of Ahmed's family are now in custody, meaning they had something to do with this slaughter, and it's not on any news site. There appears to be some sort of conspiracy that took place, meaning two or more people planning the crime that took place. But that's not in the news. What no. do you make of that? Absolutely, Barry. And we see it every time, don't we? Whether it's the jihadi brides going off to Syria or the Manchester Arena bomber, the family are involved and the media are complicit in the silence. It's just not good enough. Well, speaking of media, answer me this one, because this is dumbfounding to me, there are prominent Islam supporters in the US Congress and several very prominent Islam uh, organizations supporting the uh, movement of Muhammad here in America. I'm referring to Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib and others, and CARE, uh, the Council on American Islamic Relations, the most prominent Islamic organization in America, where are their condemnations of the shooting and the shooter? Why aren't they out leading demonstrations? They consistently, repeatedly will release statements that claim that everyone is out to kill Muslims, but when uh, an avowed Islamist like this fellow kills white Americans in a Jewish leaning supermarket, they are silent as church mice. Mm, they, I, it's so frustrating. And it's every single time. Every When it's, let's just say it was a white gentleman who was from the right. We're all told we should apologize. You know, you can't get the commentary out and Fox and others. We're so sorry. No one thinks this is good. This is terrible. Nothing is demanded of that other side to do the same thing. They always get given free reign. No one challenges them on it even. This evil is perpetuated by those very people now sitting in the heart of power here in America. And, it, and it's, it's not only distressing, it's just, it feels endless. It feels like they always will get away with it. And of course, every time we get the mental illness excuse for these shooters, every time it's nothing to do with Islam, it's always mental illness. When was the last time the side effect of psychosis was gunning down Jewish people in a supermarket? That's not a side effect of psychosis that I know about. Look, every mass murderer has a screw loose. So as a general rule, I think we can all conclude, Katie Hopkins, if you mass murder people in a supermarket, you're mentally ill. Having said that, not all mentally ill people pick up a gun and start slaughtering people. There has to be some underlying cause. There has to be a motivation. And we, if we don't talk about the motivation, in my opinion, and I think it's yours as well, we will suffer the consequences by ignoring the obvious. I, I think so. And Barry, probably my view is stronger than yours as well, which is that I'm sick of it. 
I'm sick of it. There's decent people who want to come to America. I'd be one of them. I want to work hard. I want to pay taxes. I want to contribute. When I see people coming and abusing America, it makes me sick. I just want them to be gone from your country. I want your country to be left alone, to be as great as it is. Uh, it makes me, you know, it makes me rage in return. And as well, you should be rageful because this is insanity. And the more we permit it to happen, the more we literally encourage it to happen as if it's not happening. And I think that is a tacit agreement that there are certain things we can't talk about no matter how bad they are. And this is one of them. If we can't spot, name, identify, and isolate our enemies, aren't we doomed to be defeated eventually? Yeah, absolutely. And I think what you'll see next, and I think we've seen it already, we see it in the UK, is there's this mobilization of almost fake penance for this kind of thing. So if it was an Islamist next time, sometimes there's a little mob of people dressed in t-shirts provided by someone saying that as the Muslim community, we're very sorry for the loss. And it's a bit like those Biden t-shirts, you know, let us in. Someone staging sort of a bit of, oh, we're very sorry for this. We're, it's not real, it's not meant. Uh, you know, this is part of the takeover of America and it's actively encouraged by many of those who are Islamists of their own of their own accord. Exactly right, Katie Hopkins. Thanks for coming on today. And for all those of you out there in ATP land that haven't yet subscribed to our free text message alert system, please whip out your cell phone right now in the message box Type the word truth, T-R-U-T-H, and address it to this number, 88202, push send. You'll be signed up in about three seconds for our completely free content to be sent to you every couple of days. You'll get me, you'll get Katie, and all of our contributors on your cell phone, absolutely free. For Katie Hopkins, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report. 